Hi, my name is Clarence Simpson, and this is Da Vinci's Notebook, an elegant co-op game of deduction and memory. In this game, you'll be playing researchers that have found sketches of Da Vinci's Notebook torn into pieces, like these cards right here. There will be one sketch per player, each sketch torn into four pieces. During the game, all the sketch cards will be shuffled together and dealt out to all of the players at the table. All of the sketch cards will be in players' hands. There will be no deck or any sketch cards on the table. Your goal as a team will be to have each player reassemble the sketches so that they have one, two, three, four of a particular sketch in their hand and to reassemble all of the sketches that you have. The trick for this is that when your hand is dealt to you, it will look something like this. So some of your cards will be face in, some of your cards will be face out. So you'll know some of what you have, and you'll know some of what everybody else has. So you'll have to work as a team to figure out who needs to uh, reassemble which sketch. So here's the way a turn goes. First, you'll be using any number of these clue tokens, these crystals here, to use clue abilities. Clue abilities let you do things like reposition cards in your hand. Then you'll take one of two possible actions. Your first action is to research. Research means that you flip a card in place from face out to face in or from face in to face out. Flip one card and then you gain a clue token. This is how you earn clue tokens. Um, or the second possible standard action you can take is to pass a card. The trick with passing a card is that you can only pass in the direction of the arrow on the card. So as you'll see, all face-out cards can only be passed to your left, and all face-in cards can only be passed to your right. So to pass in a different direction, you'll have to flip the cards first. If you choose to pass a card, whoever receives the card will be the next player for the next turn. Whoever, If you choose to flap, flip a card, whoever the card arrow points to will be the next active player. So there is no clockwise order in this game, and you have some control over the, the play order here. And you'll need to use that to your advantage. At any point, if you decide that you have a complete set of uh, sketches, sketch cards in your hand, you can say that you're locking in, flip all your cards face in, and reveal them to your group. If you have a complete sketch, then you are removed from the rotation and cards can pass over you, um, which helps uh, accelerate the collection of uh, sketch cards towards the end. However, if you are wrong, then you lose the game. So the trick with all this is that you have a limited number of actions. This is your action tracker over here. You, you start with a certain number of actions depending on how many players there are. And you have to lock in all of the sketches in your group before you run out of actions. That covers most of the rules, base rules of the game, and a round will last about 10-15 minutes depending on the number of players and, and the, the group. But if you're interested in a more extended and varied play experience, there is a mini campaign of 10 levels that go with this game, starting with some very simple core mechanics and over time introducing more and more complex and challenging mechanics to see if you can work your way through all of the levels. There will be different perk cards introduced here, such as this one, which lets you pass a card to anyone. There's also various paranoia cards, like this one, which me, uh, makes it so that anytime you are passed a card, it must be placed in your hand face in. And there will also be new clue abilities added as well. There will also uh, change some of the communication restrictions over time. And I think that covers everything. Uh, thanks for watching. Also, here is a short clip of the game in action being played at PAX Unplugged during one of the levels where only gestures are allowed. <laughs>